of all, all magnets have north and south poles. You should know this. And the poles are on the opposite ends of the magnets. If you break a magnet in half, you will still have a north and a south pole. Uh, you need to understand that charges, the way the charges work, so if you have same charges, they're going to repel each other. If you have the different charges, they're going to attract each other. Any place that we have a force that is exerted on a magnet or a region where magnetic force can be detected, this is the magnetic field. We have magnetic fields all over the place. First of all is your compass needle. If a compass needle is deflected when it's put in a particular location, then we say that a magnetic field exists at that point and the strength of the field is measured by the strength of the force of the compass needle. Next we have Earth, Sun, and galaxies. So the Earth, the Sun, the Milky Way, all sorts, all have magnetic fields. And these magnetic fields are caused by the movement of the electrical charges. So the electrons orbiting around atoms produce a field like the field that surrounds the Earth the sun. The field lines always point from the north pole of the magnet to the south pole of the magnet. Strong field lines are close together and evenly spaced, whereas the weak field lines, they are not uniform and they are further apart. Your first picture on the upper left hand side of your screen, that is a bar magnet showing um, iron filings and the way the magnetic field lines work. To the top right hand side of the screen, that is your bar magnet and you can see if you were to put a compass on those field lines how the compass would point. Notice that the red is pointing from north to south. And then finally the last picture is a picture of Earth. Earth has magnetic poles. It has a north pole and a south pole. What is confusing though is that the magnetic south pole is actually our geographic north pole and vice versa. So when we're talking about the geographic north pole, Santa Claus lives in the north pole, that is our actual magnetic south pole which means that if you're thinking about it, the field lines go from bottom to top, so they're going from our geographic south pole to our geographic north pole. Next we're going to look at some electromagnetism basics. So moving electric charges or currents create magnetic fields. If the current is moving through a wire, a magnetic field is going to be produced. So therefore, an electromagnetic force is the fundamental force caused by the interaction between electric and magnetic charged particles. Something to keep in mind is that electromagnetic force is weaker than strong nuclear force, but stronger than weak force, and it's also stronger than gravity. There is a misconception that gravity is a very strong force. That is not true. If gravity was a very strong force, we would all be puddles of nothing in the center of Earth because we wouldn't be able to move. Gravity is the weakest of the forces. You are able to oppose it. You're able to move with it, uh, walk around within it, move around in it. So gravity is actually a very weak force. So when we're looking at electric current and magnetism together, lots of times the field around a single wire is going to be too small to do as much any good. So there's two different ways we can make a strong magnetic fields from the flowing in the wires. The first way is to put many wires bundled together. This allows the same current to create many times the magnetic field of a single wire. So you're coiling it up. Next we have bundled wires and we bundle the wires into coils and this concentrates the magnetic field in the center. When you have a coiled wire, it's called a solenoid. A solenoid can be an electromagnet by placing an iron core inside the coils. So a solenoid can be used to move ferromagnetic material and also to do physical work. Electric motors. Electric motor, here's the key. It converts electrical energy into mechanical energy. So it's taking the current and turning it into mechanical energy, mechanical work. It uses an electromagnet to rotate the disk. You can see in the picture beneath that the rotating magnets in the disk are attracted and then repelled by the spinning of the magnet. Next we have a generator. This is completely opposite of an electric motor. A generator uses induction 
and it converts mechanical energy into electric energy. That's why you fill your generators with propane or with gasoline or whatever and then it turns it into electricity. So if your electricity goes out, you turn the generator on and it uses fuel to put electricity to your house. And again you can see the pictures below showing how the electric current and the magnets work together. Next we have transformers. Transformers change voltage and current, but it keeps the same power. Transformers work because they have two coils, and each coil has a different amount of turns or kinks in it. So you can change the voltage up, or you can change the voltage down. So if you want to take the voltage up and keep the current down, that would be a step-up transformer. Your primary number of coils is on the left side, your secondary number of coils is on the right side, and notice it's taking in voltage, voltage goes up, but your current is going to go down. And that's due to the number of the coils on which side. Next, or opposite of that, would be a step-down transformer. And a step-down transformer, you take the voltage down, but the current's going to go up. So your transformer, therefore, is going to be pretty much opposite of the step-up transformer. Now, why do we care about transformers? Well, this is what keeps your house from exploding. This is what makes pretty much anything with the energy work when you're hooked up to, say, a power plant, because the transformers either have to step up or step down. That way you don't blow fuses because there's too much voltage, too much current, or if you don't have enough current to run anything. So transformers are constantly stepping things up and stepping things down so that we can use the voltage, so we can use the current in the way that we need to use it some practical applications for electromagnetism basics. So we have to establish some rules. The first thing that we need to establish is that we're going to have to draw some of these in three dimensions. That means we need to have a way that we can see it without being able to draw it in three dimensions. So we have lines that point out of the page or point into the page. These lines, they're easy to remember if you think of an arrow. So if you have an arrow with a point and four feathers on the back, if the arrow is coming at you, that means it's coming out of the page. So it's going to look like a circle with a dot in it. Whereas if you're shooting the arrow into the page, all you're going to see are the feathers in the back. So if you see the X with the circle around it, that represents the feathers on the back of the arrow. So if you look at the picture on the bottom right hand side, we've got our current, we have our field lines, and notice the direction it's flowing because the lines out of the page are circles with dots in it and the lines into the page are the X's. So you have to think about whether an arrow's coming at you or if you're shooting an arrow into the paper. The other thing we're going to have to look at is the right hand rule. It's kind of different for straight wires and for coiled wires. So if you have a straight wire, it's going to create a circular magnetic field. We have a thing called the right hand rule. This helps us remember which direction the field is going to go and which direction the current is going to go. Now if you have a coiled current, it's going to be a little bit different. So a coiled current carrying wire creates magnetic field lines similar to a bar magnet. The picture on your left hand side is the field lines. Notice it's similar to the bar magnet. And then the picture on the right hand side shows the right hand rule. 